Hello! This week I'm just going to bring you a small update about the Drawbridge project. After the success of the current one, I promised to work on one for the Mr. FPGA. Don't get too excited, it's not ready yet, but I have made some progress, so let's take a look where I've got to. Before going any further, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you'd like to be a Patreon, consider supporting me by following the links in the video description. I've started by trying to decide the best way to connect a floppy drive to the Mister. The Mister makes use of the DE10 Nano FPGA board. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what that is right now, but suffice to say, the way it's used in the Mister is well documented. I was lucky enough to jump in early enough and order the Mister Multisystem board from RMC Retro, and mine is all set up and working. The cores on the Mister are designed to run as cycle accurate as possible to the original hardware. Not only that, but they also run at the same speed, or at least try to. With this in mind, it should be actually possible to connect a physical floppy drive directly up to the Mister. This means proper real-time access to a floppy disk should be possible, which means we don't need USB devices like the original Drawbridge, Grease Weasel, or Supercard Pro. The obvious choice from the Mister point of view is the user port, which looks like a USB 3 port. The user port provides us with ground, 5 volts, and 6 I.O. lines that are directly connected to the DE10 Nano. There's also the choice between a 7th I.O. line or 3.3 volts output. In all of these devices, that's configured using a jumper. The problem is, to control a floppy drive, however, you need an absolute minimum of 12 pins. And if we were to support this properly, we did more than that. I want to support both IBM PC style drives and Sugart drives. My hope is that if I can build an interface and prove it works on the Amiga core, then other developers may choose to support it on other cores too. Another thing I need to take care of is logic levels. The floppy drive operates at 5 volts logic, however, the DE10 operates at 3.3. You may have seen this logic level conversion on snack adapters. On mine, that option is actually built into the Mr. Multisystem, but you can still switch it off. One last decision I've made is that I don't want any microcontrollers on the board so no firmware to load. This is partly due to the global chip shortage, and secondly, because I can't think of a reason why we really need one. So I spent some time drawing up circuit diagrams, and I designed a PCB. I've ordered it, soldered it up. It's not the best job, and you can see I've already had to make some changes, see the bodge wire. This is revision 1, and I already have a revision 2 design that isn't compatible with this board. I'm not yet ready to share the details of how this board works, Mainly because I don't want anyone to build this until I'm 100% sure on the design. But safe to say, all the time critical connections like reading data connect directly to one of the I.O. pins on the user port. Once I have this working, I'll open source everything. So, there's a massive shortage of everything right now, and as I write this, and aside from the cost, you can't even get a replacement DE10 Nano right now, so I'm not about to plug this into my mister without a fair amount of confidence it won't blow it up. So I've made a bit of a test rig. On the left you can see an Arduino. I'm using this to provide a simulated user port so I can test the I.O. functions. In the middle I have a 5V to 3V logic level converter, again to simulate the environment. And finally I have a floppy drive connected up to the prototype board. There's not much to show here, but it does actually all work as expected once I've made a few modifications. So now on to prototype version 2. This design is a little bit simpler. There's a single jumper for selecting the type of drive connected, again either an IBM or Shook Art drive. You'll notice there's also a second pin header. I realised while researching this that the Amiga has some sneaky wiring going on. The original Shook Art drive only has one wire to switch on all the motors. The Amiga, however, can selectively control each drive. On the Amiga motherboard, the Gary chip is used to produce an MTR0 signal from the MTR and SELECT0 lines. For external drives, the latching logic has to be added separately. This is why if you open up an external floppy drive on the Amiga, you'll see there's a little PCB on the back. This pin header contains an extra MTR line I'm calling MTR123, which for most cores probably won't do anything different to the normal MTR line. But on the Amiga, this will be the MTR line that we'd actually feed to a second, third and fourth drive. I'm planning that if successful, I'll build a daughter board that can connect here and allow you to connect up to four floppy drives. If you're using PC floppy drives, then this connector won't be needed. I've made a few other prototypes too. I've got one that manages to fit inside a slimline drive. 
That'll be great if it works. I've also got one that's a little bit easier for the hobbyist. Whilst it's possible, if this is successful, that people will start producing these boards themselves, some people like to build these at home. So I've designed this version, which doesn't use any surface mount components at all, which means it's really easy to solder yourself at home. This design also has a further advantage in that it uses dip packages, which are still in stock everywhere. I haven't tested any of these prototypes yet, so again, I'm deliberately not showing any detail, but I'm hoping they'll all be compatible with each other and it won't matter which one you use. So what's next? Well, I need to start work by updating the Minimig core to support this board. To do this, I'm learning Verilog, which is the language used by a good majority of FPGA development, as well as actual hardware design. It's also the chosen language for the Minimig. Verilog has some overlap with other languages like C++, but it's mostly different. It's more about describing how a particular function could be created in hardware rather than in code. So it's safe to say, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. If anyone wants to help, and has a good amount of Verilog experience, then please get in contact via my website. For everyone else, watch this space, and I'll post another update when I have some more news. So if you don't want to miss that, I suggest you hit the subscribe button right now, and while you're there, hit the like button too. If you want to support in another way, well, having PCBs made and buying components all adds up, so consider becoming a Patreon too. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.